Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Today we are going to continue talking about our featured novel、mm. in this month's literature unit, entitled "The K."、Uh, from blindness to color blindness, and、uh, over the last couple of days, we've talked about the novel itself. We gave you a summary of the novel,、mm -hmm. and we also talked about the author Theodore Taylor. We talked about his career. And、uh, how he came to write、uh, our featured book, The K. But today we're actually going to talk about what the book is all about, and、uh, some of the main characters, some、mm -hmm. of the main ideas, and why we think you might enjoy reading our featured novel. Yeah, and I think it's perfect for our listeners. It's at a level that you would enjoy, and you wouldn't have to look up every other word.、Mm -hmm. That gets frustrating if you pick a novel that's. Too advanced for you. You really won't enjoy it.、Um, I know that、uh, I read once that even listening, because there are a lot of podcasts out there, you need to listen. You need to understand at least fifty percent to really get. Anything from that, the value of that,、mm. uh, goes down if you can't understand anything. It's not really useful. So pick something that you know. It has、uh, maybe one page has a couple of words you don't know. And I have to say, I'm not advertising for Kindle, but I have to say, Tom and I have Kindles, and I didn't think I'd like to read books like that. But you can actually put your finger on one of the words on the screen, and the dictionary comes up, and you can find out what it means immediately. So if you're thinking about that, I.、Agree. Encourage you because it's really helpful, at least while you're trying to learn a new language, especially. I have met some people here in Taiwan, local people、uh -huh. who do own Kindles, yeah,、uh, for the expressed purpose of reading things in English. Good,、uh, but they're still kind of few and far between. You just don't see them. I think it's because there isn't a lot of content available on e-readers for people here in Taiwan in Chinese. In Chinese, yeah, because of different publishing companies and stuff like that. But、uh, who knows?、Uh, this book is probably. Probably available as an ebook.、Uh, I also happen to have seen、uh, somebody reading from this book. I think reading the entire contents of this book on YouTube.、Uh, so you may be able to listen to the novel、oh. as opposed to reading it if you can't find a copy. But、mm -hmm. in any case,、uh, those are all kind of beside the point. What we're going to be doing today is talking about the book itself and some of the ideas. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's read the entire contents of our lesson right now. Taylor purposefully chose the name "The K" for his novel. The title highlights the fact that the book is an adventure story at sea. It also alludes to the idea that the main scenes will occur on the K. On another level, the K is essentially a microcosm of the world we live in. Although the story revolves around the characters Philip and Timothy, they face the problems that plague society as well. One of these issues, and a major theme of the book, is racism. At the start of the novel, Philip, a young white boy, is not very fond of black people. It seems that he has learned this type of discrimination from his mother, who tells Philip to stay away from the black workers in the Caribbean. Philip retains this prejudice when he first meets Timothy. Over time, however, he begins to understand and respect Timothy. When Philip loses his sight, Timothy takes care of him and teaches him to survive. In the end, Timothy even sacrifices his life for Philip. After Philip regains his lost vision, he comes back to the Caribbean. He ends up being friends with the black workers there because they remind him of Timothy. This suggests that it is possible for people to overcome racism. If they make an effort to know and understand people of different races, another central theme is blindness. In the beginning, Philip's eyesight is perfect, but he is blind in the sense that he doesn't understand the world. He is quick to give people labels based on how they look. When he literally goes blind, he is forced to see the world in a different way. He learns to judge people by their character and inner beauty. Instead of their appearance. Okay, everybody, it's time for us to discuss the contents of today's lesson again. The K from blindness to color blindness. 
is our actual novel. And again, we're talking about the novel itself now. So Taylor, the author, purposefully chose the name the K for his novel. So purposefully. Wow, that's an adverb here. It's、uh, kind of tough to say here, but that just means he did this on purpose.、Uh, it wasn't an accident. He chose the name the K or the Key, as it's pronounced in some places.、Uh, that's the title of the novel. You might think it's a simple. Title for a novel, you know, just the K, the key.、Yeah. What the heck is that? Couldn't have, couldn't it have had a longer, more sophisticated title?、Mm. I wanted to mention here because when we speak, we often say, "Oh, I did this on purpose." I, I never say purposefully. I purposefully did this. It's kind of hard to say. I don't think I've ever used this word in conversation. Yeah. Actually, yeah. so, but let me show you what it would be like if we used on purpose. We would say Taylor chose the name the K for his novel on purpose. We definitely wouldn't say Taylor on purpose chose the name. It sounds better at the end. But when we're writing, sometimes we choose different ways to express because it sounds a little better. You guys do that too in Chinese.、Uh, But yeah, I don't ever say purposefully when I'm just speaking. So don't worry about that. But you know what it means. It means on purpose. You could also say intentionally. Yes. Or deliberately. Yes, deliberately is good too. Yeah, I agree.、Mm. Okay, so he chose that name for the novel on purpose. The title highlights the fact that the book is an adventure story at sea. Okay, that much is certain. If you see that, and if you know what a key is or a K is, you'll know. Oh, this story takes place on an island, a very small island, a、yeah. tropical island that's usually formed from coral or something like that. That's what a K is、mm -hmm. or a key is.、Uh, a small island in the tropics. So you're going to expect an adventure story. And that's what you get. And the title highlights the fact that it is an adventure story that takes place at sea. It also alludes to the idea that the main scenes will occur on the quay.、Uh, to allude means it kind of gives us a hint about this. It sort of strongly suggests that this is the case. It doesn't come out and say it directly, but when you see this, you pretty much know that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, alludes to is a great word. You need to get that one in your vocabulary. Now, on another level, the K is essentially a microcosm of the world we live in. Essentially means is basically what it is. This is its nature.、Uh, this is the essence of that thing. A microcosm is like having a little miniature model of something that is found other part in other parts of the world or in life. It gives you an idea of what some place might be like. So, a microcosm of the world we live in. So, if you look Look at this book. It's like a little example in just a couple pages, or at least the length of the novel, of what the rest of the world is like.、Um, how people treat each other、um, in other parts of the world.、Uh, we all have to deal with this problem of racism, unfortunately. Uh, right, another novel, The Lord of the Flies,、yeah. too, is kind of a microcosm of the world where these people are stranded on an island. So, it kind of、uh, gives us the whole world in a nutshell. Okay,、right. so yes, this is kind of、uh, something that can tell us about the whole world by just simply learning about this story on this small island in the Caribbean Sea. Although the story revolves around the characters Philip and Timothy, they face the problems that plague society as well. To revolve. Around means to go around something. In astronomy, you can use this to talk about the moon, the Earth, and the sun. The moon revolves around the Earth. The Earth re revolves around the sun. Jupiter revolves around the sun, etc.、Mm -hmm. But in this particular case, it just means that the main characters are Philip and Timothy. All of the action involves them. Right. So、uh, it's kind of cool that、uh, you just can focus on these two characters. If problems plague you, do you know? Plague is being used as a verb here, but、mm. I originally learned this word as a noun, and it just means some contagious disease、mm. that's spreading, and it usually includes fever and you know just awful symptoms of the disease. There were plagues, the Black Plague was it the Black Fever, the Black Plague,、mm -hmm. uh, long ago before we had medicine or knowledge of how to prevent some of these diseases.、Uh, but this is being used as a verb, so imagine. Imagine if you're using that awful, contagious disease as a verb. It just means that something is causing trouble or irritation. It's harming something that plagues society. It's like we can't get rid of it. You can't kill it. It's causing a lot of problems. 
Right. So again, it's a microcosm of the world's problems, especially those that involve race. And one of these issues and a major theme of the book is racism.、Mm -hmm. uh, racism here is a noun. It just refers to、uh, the belief that members of a certain race、uh, have certain characteristics that are specific to that race.、Uh, usually, that involves thinking that one race is superior to another race.、Mm -hmm. uh, we have that、uh, attitude all over the world, and、uh, this particular. Particular、uh, theater of racism, of course, is black versus white.、Uh, the boy is white and the man is black.、Mm -hmm. So here we're, we've got a boy,、uh, Philip. He's a young white boy, and it says he's not very fond of black people. Not very fond of. Let's take the positive version. If you're fond of someone, you really like them.、Uh, you probably treat them well.、Uh, I don't think it's quite love, right? But you just really like them. Oh, I'm fond of her. Oh, I'm so fond of that.、Um, so he's not very fond of black people. So he was raised in a home where he heard his mother say things that were very racist.、Um, he seems it seems that he has learned this type of discrimination from his mom. If、uh, this discrimination. Is the noun form of the verb to discriminate? It means you have these ideas about treating people based on what race they're in.、Uh, you feel like one race is better than another. There's also discrimination that happens between sexes, right? That's sexism, where men are treated better than women, or women are treated better than men. That happens too sometimes. So. Uh, if you are discriminating against people, you're not treating them fairly and equally as the people around you. That's right. So he's not very fond of black people, and he probably learned this type of behavior from his mother, as we're going to find out in a couple of seconds.、Yeah. But、uh, oh my goodness, Stephanie, I'm so exhausted from our explanation. <laughs> I need to take a break. So let's turn things over now to our Chinese teacher. 大家好，欢迎收听 English Digest。我是 Alice。今天我们要阅读的文章是 Unit Fourteen 文学单元的第三天课程。在今天的课程中，我们将会了解《The K》这本小说想要探讨的议题以及想要传达的讯息。首先，文章的第一段提到，故事虽然发生在一座岛上，但实际上这座岛就相当于当时整个社会的缩影。我们看到第一段的第二、第三句。The title highlights the fact that the book is an adventure story at sea. 书名强调了这本书是海上冒险故事的事实。It also alludes to the idea that the main scenes will occur on the quay. 它也暗示了主要场景会发生在珊瑚岛的构想。这两句都有 that 引导的名词子句放在名词的后面。当做该名词的同位语。考试的时候常会考 that 引导名词子句作为同位语用，和 that 当关系代名词的差别。that 引导名词子句的时候，后面会接一个完整的句子，就相当于前面的名词。例如 ，We don't like the new rule that everyone should work overtime。我们不喜欢每个人都必须加班的这个规定。That 子句后面接的完整句子 ，Everyone should work overtime， 就等于前面所提到的 the new rule。此时的 that 是名词子句，不能用关系代名词 which 代替。如果是 We don't like the new rule that would force us to work overtime， 我们不喜欢这个强迫我们加班的新规定。这句的 that 后面不是接一个完整句子。That 代替前面的先行词，可带回后面的子句，变成 The new rule would force us to work overtime. 此时的 that 是关系代名词，可以用 which 代替。我们接着看第一段最后一句的 Although the story revolves around the characters Philip and Timothy, they face the problems that plague society as well. 虽然故事以菲利和提蒙西两个角色为中心，但他们所面临的问题也困扰着社会。动词 revolve 是旋转的意思。片语 revolve around something 就是指围绕着某事物，或是以某事物为重要内容。例如 ，the novel revolves around the investigation of a murder。
这本小说的内容以那宗谋杀案件的调查为主，字根 volve v o l v e 有滚或是卷的意思。常见的动词有 evolve e v o l v e 是进化或是演化的意思。例如 ，the debate is about whether or not birds evolved from dinosaurs. 这个辩论是关于鸟类是否从恐龙演化而来。Involve, I N V O L V E， 是包括、牵涉的意思。例如 ，The politician is said to have been involved in the scandal。这位政治人物据说涉入这件丑闻之中。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. both are correct. Philip retains this prejudice when he first meets Timothy. So, if you retain something, you hold it. You keep it inside. A retaining wall would be a wall that blocks water from coming into the city. A retaining wall. If you have braces on your teeth to make them straight, when they take your braces off, they give you something called a retainer that keeps your teeth in place. So, retain means to to hold or keep in place. And he has this prejudice when he first meets Timothy. So Timothy never gets a fair shot when he first meets Timothy. He's already decided, ah, he's a black guy. I don't like him. If you're pred- prejudiced, you have these opinions that aren't based on actual experience. You just, you know, come to、uh, this person thinking they're bad before you even get to know them. Right. The word itself kind of tells us what it means: prejudice or prejudgment. Basically,、right. you're making your conclusions without actually having investigated something, or、uh, in this. Particular case, you actually haven't met any black people, but you've already concluded that they're bad, and so prejudice and discrimination are kind of similar.、Mm-hmm. Although prejudice does emphasize the fact that you've made this conclusion before you actually have any facts. So he's learned discrimination from his mother to think that white people are superior to black people, and so he has this prejudice that he learned from his mother. He still has it. He retains it. He has kept it. When he meets Timothy for the first. Time, so you can bet that when he sees Timothy, he goes, "Oh, a black guy. He's inferior." That's what my mommy told me. Yeah, that's what's happened here. Now, over time, he begins to understand and respect Timothy because he's gotten to know him. Sometimes that's that's the only way you can get over that is just to get to know people, and it changes your opinion and your prejudice. When Philip loses his sight, Timothy takes care of him and teaches him to survive. Remember, they're on the—they're、uh, off the boat. They're on the raft. You know, it's really hard. So, in the end, Timothy even sacrifices his life for Philip. If you sacrifice yourself for somebody else, you give up. Here, it just means he's giving up his life. As an offering, so he's doing his—he's giving up his life for the、uh, for the ability for Timothy to continue to live. Remember, they had that really bad storm, that fierce storm. We're thinking it's a typhoon or hurricane.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was so bad; the wind was blowing, and Timothy shielded Philip with his body. That's how he was killed. And Timothy, of course, was hit by flying debris.、Uh, we learned that word before debris、yeah. stuff flying in the wind, and so Timothy died. He sacrificed his life for Philip. And after Philip regains his lost vision, he comes back to the care.
Caribbean. So again, remember Philip had lost his vision.、Uh, that's just when you can see your vision. That's one of the senses: hearing, vision, touch, taste, and smell.、Uh, those are the five senses. So he lost his vision, and then he later got it back when he was rescued. His parents, I guess, could afford a nice doctor to、mm-hmm. operate on him. Yeah. So again, after he regains his lost vision, he can see again. He decides to return to the Caribbean and tries to find that island that he spent time with Th- Timothy on. So he wants to, I guess, also find Timothy's grave or something and say,、oh, "I'm sorry for the prejudice. I I learned my lesson. You black people are actually okay." Yeah. So after Philip、uh, regains his lost vision, he does go back to the Caribbean. It says here he ends up being friends with the black workers there because they remind him of his good friend Timothy. If you end up somewhere, it just means it's the end of the story. That's where you. That's where you are at the end of some process or travel or journey.、Uh, that's where he ends up. So sometimes it's not literal; it's figurative. You're not really going anywhere. It's a story. So at the end of this experience. How does he feel? Well, he's changed inside. He ends up or feels differently about the black workers there. He actually likes them because they remind him of Timothy. This suggests that it's possible for people to change, to overcome racism, if they make an effort to know and understand people of different races. Sometimes that's all it takes. Maybe you've never been around a certain race, and so you have. You know feelings that、uh, you know you're kind of prejudiced, but then you meet somebody and you get to know them of that race, and you think, "Oh, I was wrong. They're not like that at all." So if you overcome something, you're able to succeed in dealing with a problem you have or some sort of difficulty. Indeed, so you can overcome racism if you make an effort, and if you happen to have a good experience、yeah. with a race of people or someone from that race that you previously did not like, and you can have a new understanding, you can turn over a new leaf, etc., etc.、Mm. So that's one theme in the book. Another central theme is blindness. Remember, Philip became blind as a result of an explosion or a blast on the boat that was. Sunk that by a German submarine, so he's blind here. And when you are blind, you're suffering from blindness. And in the beginning, Philip's eyesight is perfect, but he is blind in the sense that he doesn't understand the world. So blind can mean a couple of things. It can mean literally you can't see, you are blind.、Mm. But also, we describe someone as being very ignorant of something; they just don't know about something. We can describe those people as being blind. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Now he's quick to give people labels based on how they look. When we see that word labels, we often use labels、um, to put on products to tell people what they are, right?、Mm-hmm. But if you give people labels, you might have a friend who. You know, is is overweight. You might call this person fatty. You know, that's giving someone a label based on how they look, and that's something that you don't want to do. So,、uh, before he met Timothy and had that experience, it was easy for him to just put people in categories. Oh, you're this. Remember, he called Timothy stupid because he couldn't read. But maybe Timothy had never had the opportunity to learn. But he was actually not stupid. He was very intelligent. Absolutely. You did mention the word fat there. Yeah, and I should note that、uh, here in Taiwan, people usually don't hold themselves back if they see someone who is fat. They say, "Oh, you are so fat." What happened? If you do this with、uh, Westerners, especially <laughs> Americans, it's considered rude. So,、yeah. if you see somebody who has gained twenty pounds or whatever, try to restrain yourself. Don't say, <laughs> "Oh, you've gotten so fat. What's wrong with you?" Just keep your mouth shut. Yeah, that it's happened to me. It's、uh, it's interesting. Because、uh, we don't do that in our culture, it's considered rude. So、it's、be careful. It's kind of interesting here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so fat. You gained pounds. Wow. What happened?、Uh, you guys don't pull any punches there. But in any case, here.、Uh, oh wait, getting, you need、yes. to explain pull punches. Pull any punches. What is that? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that's. <laughs> oh, I do. I do. So it's, you're boxing somebody, and if you pull a punch, you decide not to hit somebody. And when you say to someone, "Oh, you're so fat. You've gained weight," it's like you're punching them. So、yep. when to, when you pull, don't pull. You don't pull any punches. Means you don't hold back. You just hit people with what you have to say. So be you、careful. don't hesitate. <laughs> you let it all hang out,、mm. which means you just、uh, say what you're feeling. Okay.、Yeah. But in any case, here we're talking about labels. Here, oh, you're so fat. That's a 
label. Oh, you're so dumb. That's a label. Yeah. And so he gave these people labels, especially Timothy. Oh, you're black, so you're stupid. You're lazy, etc. That's a label. And when he literally goes blind, that means for real, not figuratively. Yeah. Blind being ignorant, but in this case, blind being unable to see with your eyes.、Mm -hmm. He literally goes blind. He is forced to see the world in a different way. So yes, indeed, he does go blind. So it's also interesting. Uh, about this book that、uh, Philip is describing this island from the point of view of a blind person. Yeah. So think about that. How would a blind person describe his or her surroundings? It's interesting. He learns to judge people by their character. How someone is, you know, your character might be that you're honest, you're a hard worker, you're charitable, you're、um, very polite to people. Inner beauty is what the person is like inside their personality and not their physical appearance. So those are some of the things he learned. Sounds like.、Uh, His adventure、uh, that he went on actually helped him improve as a person. Right now, guys, we're going to wrap up by listening one more time to our Chinese teacher. 文章的第二段提到，小说要探讨的另一个议题就是种族歧视。我们看到第二段的倒数第三句 ：After Philip regains his lost vision, he comes back to the Caribbean. 在菲利重获失去的视力后，他回到加勒比海地区。名词 vision 在本句是视力的意思，但别忘了 vision 还有远景、远见的意思。形容词 visionary v i s i o n a r y 就是指有远见的，也可以当名词用，是指有远见的人。例如 ，the prosperity of the city owes a lot to the mayor's visionary leadership. 这个城市的繁荣大部分归功于这位市长有远见的领导才能。文章的最后一段提到眼盲的议题。Philip 在视力良好的时候被歧视所盲目，在眼盲之后反而更能看清事实的真相。我们看到这一段的第三句 ：When he literally goes blind, he is forced to see the world in a different way. 当他真正失明时，他被迫以不同的方式去看这个世界。副词 literally 有照字面意思里的意思。片语 take something literally 就是指照字面意思去理解某事物。例如 ，Children tend to take what adults say to them literally. 孩子往往会照字面意思去理解大人对他们所说的话。Literally 也有确实的、真正的、简直的意思。例如 ，When he was told the bad news, Jack literally exploded. 当杰克被告知这个坏消息时，他简直大发雷霆。以上就是今天的课程，谢谢收听。Thanks for joining us, guys, and we hope that you'll join us again soon for English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. Goodbye. Bye.